Welcome to the Touch MBA Admissions Podcast. Do you need help figuring out which schools to apply to or how to get into the world's top MBA programs? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others on this podcast and on our site, touchmba.com, as they seek the admissions edge. And now, here's your host, Darren Joe. Hey guys, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Darren. And what we do in this show is interview admissions directors from the world's top business schools. Uh, We also interview students and we talk to admissions experts. And our goal with this podcast is to help you go behind the scenes of the admissions process and really understand what makes schools different and how to get in your target schools. Thank you for listening. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And this week I spoke with Ruthie Piles from the W.P. Carey School of Business MBA program, which is at Arizona State University. They really believe that business is personal at W.P. Carey. And this means a number of things, but mostly that it's a really high touch program and that the admission staff is even willing to work with MBA applicants before they even get in the program and counsel them during their application process on you know, how to write a better essay or how to prepare a better CV. And they carry this entire approach through their program with high contact with staff and faculty, and of course, your fellow classmates. They're really strong in supply chain. That's what they're most highly ranked for, but they're also strong in strategic marketing and finance, and they have an extremely generous scholarship policy. Over 80% of their full-time MBAs are awarded scholarships. And you can find a lot more information at touchmba.com slash podcast. For each episode we do, we also have write-ups and fast facts about the program. So for Carrie, for example, we give you the fast facts about their program structure, uh, their admissions, their scholarship policies, and career opportunities. So you can find all those write-ups for every episode at touchmba.com slash podcast. Also, if you need help figuring out which school fits you best, that's what we do. That's the difference we're trying to make in this industry. Make that school selection process easier for you so you can make more educated choices. Go head over to touchmba.com, upload your profile there, tell us a bit more about yourself, and we'd be happy to give you some free school selection help. We also have an online admissions course, and lately a lot more people have been signing up. We have applicants from the US, Vietnam, China, Singapore, Mexico, and India in there. So I encourage you to check that out at touchmba.com slash course. In this online course, we cover every part of the application and what you can do to give yourself the best chance to get in. And we have a private forum attached to that where uh, you can ask me questions and other applicants questions about your application. All right, so let's get straight to the episode. I'm thrilled to introduce our next guest, Ruthie Piles, who is the Director of Graduate Programs, Admissions and Recruiting at the W.P. Carey School of Business at Arizona State University in the greater Phoenix area of Arizona. Ruthie, thank you for your time and welcome to the Touch MBA podcast. Thank you, Darren. I'm really excited to be here. Would you mind just sharing a a little bit more about your background for our listeners? Sure, absolutely. Well, I have a a kind of a non-traditional background. I spent kind of the first 20 years of my life in the entertainment industry, funny enough. So um, I can certainly relate to uh, a variety of different MBA applicants who are coming from various different perspectives when they're thinking about pursuing business. The past basically 10 to 15 years of my life I've spent in higher education administration. I've done primarily admissions. Um, However, I did do a, a small stint in career services. But really my true passion lies in coaching and mentoring, influencing people through language and ideas, and really just being a strong advocate for students. I'm extremely passionate about higher education, and I am so excited to be here at WP Carey because I've had the opportunity to do both undergraduate admissions as well as graduate admissions, and I really feel like I found a place here, so I'm excited to be here. And we're excited to have you, and I I can't wait to hear more about this school and learn more about Carrie. So the first question that I always ask is is simply, what makes the Carrie MBA unique from other top business schools? Great. Well, I think that's an excellent question. Um, I think one of the most important aspects of our MBA program is that the WP Carrie School of Business 
business is personal. Now, now for us, that's not just a catchphrase or a slogan. It, it really truly is a way of life. It's something that you feel from our faculty, our students, and our staff from the moment that you engage with us all the way throughout your program. You know, when evaluating areas that really distinguish the WP Carey MBA from other programs, I usually focus in on three areas, and that's quality, academics, and outcomes. Now, when it comes to quality, our school is recognized as a top business school in the country, consistently ranked in the top 30, offering the same high quality MBA across our portfolio of programs, including full-time, evening, weekend, online, and executive. But what's most impactful about the quality of our program is, although each one of our programs receive high rankings, such as you know, our full-time program at 27, a number two for online, 18 for evening, and 13 for executive, we also receive notoriety and recognition at the departmental level, with a ranking of number three in supply chain and logistics, as well as number 12 in information systems. You know, this commitment to quality is achieved through the dedication and expertise of our world-class faculty. They consult for over 300 organizations worldwide, and every single year, they take the time to reevaluate our curriculum to ensure that it's innovative and responsive, you know, practical and relevant, and that it applies to our ever-changing business environment. It's really important to us that when it comes to academics that we have a focused and flexible curriculum that really allows students to receive the same strong foundational core and access to the same world-renowned faculty, but also the ability to be flexible, to really customize their degree to suit their personal and professional pursuits. You know, we really want our students to have, you know, breadth as well as depth to their education. And one of the ways our students really achieve that breadth is the ability to kind of customize their degree and identify new areas of interest through areas of emphasis, electives, uh, concurrent degrees and certificates. And, and then we find the depth in the education through the intensive study of a functional area of expertise. It's really important that through our academics, our students are prepared to create impact and positive change. And it's one of the reasons why we take a, an entrepreneurial approach to learning and conduct groundbreaking research so that we can really create an environment where students can take what they're learning in the classroom and immediately apply it into the work environment. And that leads me to our third differ differentiator, which really is outcomes. I think one of the most important aspects of any program is the support that you're going to receive along the way. Our student services staff and our graduate career coaches are really there to help you every single step of the way. Student services is going to be there to keep you focused, you know, to, keep, to encourage you to stay involved, to really challenge you, to, to work with you to achieve your success. And our career coaches start working with you before you even step foot on campus. They provide you know, a review of resumes, they do personal assessments, they do mock interviews. Um, they really help you and provide you with the tools that you need to articulate your value proposition and promote your personal brand to companies and employers that you've targeted in your job search. This personal coaching really enables you to kind of stand out amongst the crowd when applying for internships and employment after the program, which is perhaps the reason why our, our full-time program has a 90% placement rate uh, 90 days after graduation. Oh, wow. So when you talk about business is personal, yeah. how does that philosophy bleed through Carrie? You know, like I said, I mean, you see it each and every day. So from the moment that you engage with one of our admissions professionals, uh, our admissions staff, you're, you're going to be connected with someone who truly is invested in your success. We're going to be reaching out to you via phone, via email. We're going to be asking you, what is it that you want to accomplish? We're going to try to really figure out that wonderful coin frame that we love, which is fit. You know, are we the, the right place for you? Do we, do we share the same values? Do we share, share the same objectives? Can we really be, you know, that, that advocate for you and provide you what you need in order to be successful? And then that continues through the program from, you know, the faculty. I mean, really paying attention to, to what's happening in the business market and making changes to our curriculum in order to be able to really infuse that into our students, You're sitting down with them, creating that personal relationship. So I think you really find it throughout our community and it's really ingrained into our culture. And how many full-time students do you have each year? So we roughly have an intake of about 70 students a year, um, but it can vary. It can go from you know 65 to you know, 75, maybe even 80, because for us, it's about quality, not necessarily quantity. 
Are there any exciting new developments happening with the program? Oh, absolutely. So Arizona State University is a place that is focused in on innovation and change. And we really work each and every day to define our place on both a local as well as a global scale. So a couple of exciting things that I'd like to mention. First and foremost is we were recently recognized as being the number one online MBA program for veterans. Now that's really important to us because not only because of our strategic location here in Phoenix, having access to a large military base, but also here in the Southwest, we do have a lot of military families you know, living in our community. I think it says a great deal about our MBA program truly being focused and flexible that whether you're here in the United States, either in the military or a veteran, or someone who is deployed overseas, you know, fighting for our country, I think that it says a great deal about our program that we are able to provide a highly ranked, high quality WP Carey MBA to our military uh, individuals who are really around the world and, and wanting to kind of continue to evolve both personally and professionally. So I think that's one really exciting exciting development that we're extraordinarily proud of. The other thing is, is that we've recently been able to establish a partnership with our Forte Foundation organization. So we recently became a sponsor of Forte Foundation. And this is an organization that is entirely committed to supporting women in business. And I know that's extraordinarily important to our Dean, Amy Hillman. Now, she's a, a world-renowned management expert. She's a popular teacher, a noted researcher, and one of the only female business uh, school deans among top business schools. So for us, um, although we've always done an excellent job of really encouraging women to pursue business at the undergraduate level here, and then, of course, at the graduate level, I think this further just solidifies our commitment uh, to women in business and ensuring that there is a strong transition um, from undergraduate to graduate and then, of course, into the workplace. The last two things that I'd like to talk about is leadership. Leadership is something that most business schools across the country are always working to identify ways in which they can weave it into their curriculum and really develop strong leaders. We, we hear business professionals each and every day telling us how leadership is so important in today's business environment. And so we really work with students on a variety of different levels in order to incorporate that. So of course, we have everything from individual development plans to you know, leadership opportunities, both in school and outside of school. But we also are working, especially in our full-time program, to develop leadership competencies throughout the full-time MBA. We're using uh, leadership competencies that have been identified, such as agility, execution, decision-making um, with integrity, uh, emotional intelligence, communicating effectively and influencing. And we've, we've kind of identified these things, and we're really finding ways through our curriculum, through our classroom delivery, and through our other options to really find ways to incorporate these leadership competencies in our students and make sure that when they graduate from our program, they really have gained that additional insight in a very meaningful way. One of the ways in which this will complement is we're in our second year of basically starting a, a new initiative called our Executive in Residence Program. This is an incredible opportunity for our full-time community to be paired with a volunteer group of senior executives. These executives are basically going to be coaches and mentors that are going to work with you as you embark on your new career opportunities. They're going to help you with things such as leadership coaching and mentoring. Um, they're going to help you with applied projects, career preparation, classroom activities. And so during this two-year MBA program, you're really going to be encouraged to work with these individuals to take your level of success to, to a new level. So we're really excited about that opportunity. So how would you describe the student culture at Cary uh, to someone who may not have a chance to visit campus? I would certainly say that the culture here at WP Carey is, is definitely reflective of our community here in, in Phoenix um, and in Arizona and in the Southwest. So, you know, you, this is a really warm and friendly part of the country, not only in weather, but also in spirit. As far as WP Carey is concerned, we really truly value things such as excellence and impact and integrity and community. We are a a culture that is really designed around innovation and change. And, you know, we really embrace risk and foster entrepreneurship. Recently, I had a conversation with a student in which um, he talked to me about why he chose WP Carey over other business programs. And he really talked about in his conversation about this was a place in which he really felt 
safe. Like he felt like he had a safe place to learn where he could try and fail and try again and be successful. A place where there was, you know, healthy competition and intellectual curiosity, but yet also a commitment to excellence. You know, one of the things he talked about was, you know, the diverse student population, the diverse perspectives that he was really seeing in the classroom. Um, and having that opportunity to really engage with different industries, different companies, different cultures, and, um, you know, and to really see things from different perspectives was something that I think really, really set the W.P. Carey community and, and the, the student culture apart from other business schools. Yeah. And what is it like reaching out to Carey alumni? Are, are they really engaged? Because I think that's such a big part of business school is how active and engaged its alumni are. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So we are 90,000 strong, which I think says a great deal about the quality of our school and, and the type of students that are drawn to, to our campus. So we, we do a, a variety of different things here on this campus to ensure that our students have connections to alum and they have a general sense of how that network will influence them, you know, both pre and post graduation. Just quickly kind of walking us through the life cycle. I think from the moment somebody expresses an interest in one of our programs, if they'd like to speak with one one of our alumni, the admissions office does a great job in kind of reaching out to our community to really assess who the best person would be based upon, you know, that prospective student's area of interest or area of expertise, um, and really try to find someone that will really help them decide whether or not WB Carey is the right program for them. In uh, Once you're here and actually admitted into one of our programs, you know, there's a variety of different networking opportunities that will exist both inside as well as outside of the classroom with our alumni. And then once you've graduated from the program, I know that our alumni organization is extraordinarily dedicated to ensure that, you know, there's strong lines of communication between us in the school, you know, we, we will not be successful without the, the assistance of our alumni. And our alumni do such an incredible job of, you know, referring students back to the school, really making sure that uh, job opportunities and um, opportunity, that information about what's happening in the industry is really getting back to our school so that we can really stay on the cutting edge of where we need to be. What is Carrie best known for? Gosh, I, I would say that, <laughs> that probably from an academic perspective, um, we're really known for our expertise in supply chain management, uh, strategic marketing and services leadership, as well as finance. Um, I would say those are the three areas in which we're, we're, we're really popular and which students really know us for. The other things that I would certainly mention would be uh, a strong return on investment, I think when you compare a lot of top business schools, uh, I think that you'll find that the WP Carey School of Business is really a, a strong return on investment for students. And, and then, of course, our focus in on entrepreneurship uh, and leadership. Yeah, I mean, you've talked uh, a few times about how Carey is really focused on innovation and change. And mm -hmm. you just mentioned entrepreneurship. Yes. If I was really interested in entrepreneurship, why would, you know, what could I do at Carey? Sure. Well, I think, you know, there's a variety of different things that you can do um, through our program. As I mentioned earlier, we do have the opportunity to actually take an area of emphasis in um, in the field of entrepreneurship. So you'll have the opportunity to kind of work with faculty, um, to work with research centers here on campus to really kind of dive into the field of um, uh, or I should say the area of entrepreneurship and really understand that from a, from a holistic perspective. I think that you know many people that are interested in pursuing entrepreneurship have a variety of different paths that they want to take. You know, some of them want to start their own company, but some of them just want to be, you know, innovators. They want to understand, um, you know, they want to understand business from this perspective, but they may not necessarily, you know, want to um, start their own company. You know, so many people just assume everybody wants to start their own company, and that's not necessarily the case in every situation. So, you know, we understand that that the entrepreneurial spirit exists across a multitude of things. And so we really work to incorporate that into not only our curriculum, but our delivery and the opportunities that we give our students, both from in, in the classroom as well as from a career perspective. So, you know, not only can you do a formal, um, you know, kind of uh, area of emphasis that is incorporated into your curriculum, but there's going to be research opportunities, the opportunity to work with faculty um, that, who are really experts in entrepreneurship. We have faculty that have, you know, bought and sold companies who, who you know, who really understand entrepreneurship at a deep level um, that these students can sit down with and consult with and really, you know, pose questions to and, and develop a strong relationship so they can really understand all the components of, of what goes into that, that mindset and that spirit. 
Why should candidates get their MBA in Phoenix and Arizona? You know, what some people don't realize is that Phoenix is the sixth largest city in the United States, and we're a thriving metropolitan area. I mean, we're surrounded by beautiful lakes and national parks. We love the outdoors. We love to go hiking. Um, it's, the, it's the type of place where you can literally ski, hike, and swim all in the same day if you really wanted to. Um, you know, we're surrounded by numerous golf courses and home to four major sports teams. Um, you know, we're also the, the home home to, you know, beautiful museums, live music, food festivals. And we have, of course, over 300 days of sunshine a year. So <laughs> I think that's a big selling point for a lot of places. Um, you know, if from the from the career side, we're in close proximity to multiple Fortune 1000 companies and organizations um, that provide a nice opportunity for internship opportunities and job placement. You know, and our strategic location in the southwestern portion of the United States really affords us the opportunity to act as a gateway to Central and South America, as well as the Pacific Rim. You know, res both residents, as you know, as well as students, are are drawn to our culture of entrepreneurship and innovation, as well as kind of the laid back and friendly community. You know, so I think that that really encompasses who we are. If we can now talk about admissions. I, I think applicants hear about fit all the time. So I want to ask you, what fit qualities are you looking for? It is a very, very difficult question. It's such a difficult thing sometimes to be able to explain, but I will promise everybody that who's listening to this podcast that when you engage with a school and from the moment you meet someone, from the moment that you start learning about a school, you will get this sense, this feeling. You'll get this sense that this is right, that this just feels good. And I think that sometimes while it's hard to put it into language, you know, sometimes we really have to trust our gut and our instincts as to, as to what feels right. But, you know, what I will tell you is that when we're looking at fit from an admissions perspective and from an academic perspective, you know, there's, a, there's quite a few things that we're looking at. The first thing that I'd like to focus in on is really similar values. I think that's very important that we identify, that you identify what the values are of the business school in which you're applying to and, and do those match your values? Are those things the same things that are important to you? So for us, it's community, integrity, excellence, and impact. We want to accept students into our program that want to create an impact, that want to have a voice here at WP Carey. We want students who are proactive and who, who want to be supported in their educational and career pursuits. You know, someone who truly understands a, a partnership that must exist between the student and the school and somebody that really wants to be a part of a place that's always working to define their place, both locally as well as globally, and, you know, improve themselves and find better solutions. I think that, that that's what WP Carey really represents. Impact. Impact is one I, I wanted to uh, expand upon a little yes, more. Yes, of course. Such a crucial trait. How can, I mean, just from a peer application perspective, how can candidates show that they will make an impact without saying just that, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to make an impact, right? You believe me. Sure right. I do. Um, <laughs> You know, well, you know, I think first and foremost, it's, you know, what many people forget is that we need to do our research, right? We really need to understand, you know, who the school is and, and what's important to them and, and what opportunities really exist there. I think once you've identified, um, you know, the, the, the synergies that exist between you and that school and, you know, the areas in which you complement each other, I think that once you've, you've kind of identified what that is, you can really kind of begin to incorporate that into your essays um, from an application perspective. So we often ask you things, you know, such as, you know, why a WP Carey MBA? You know, why us? Um, you know, we're, we're going to ask you questions that are really going to focus in on, on this particular area. And, you know, when a student has really taken the time to learn who we are or to engage with a faculty or to engage with a, with a current student and, and understand what this culture, what this community, what the curriculum is really like, I think that the students are really much more informed to be able to, to demonstrate what type of impact they could potentially have. So, you know, this, this passion that they may have for, you know, uh, the services industry and really understanding kind of, you know, marketing from the services perspective or, um, you know, really enjoying the, the, the supply chain focus and um, really thinking through about, about what that means for them or, um, you know, wanting to, to kind of explain, um, you know, it, you know, how they really want to be that, be proactive in not only their, 
their time at WP Carey, but also their career search and to ensure that, you know, that they're connecting to the right places. I think that they're really just demonstrating their enthusiasm um, and, and really aligning with our, our values are things that will really help us to demonstrate the impact that they could potentially have here. Yeah, and related to that is your relatively smaller class size, yes. cohort size. Mm-hmm. And so what do uh, your students and alumni say are the best parts of that? You know, I think it's because of, of the opportunity for such rich discussion and, you know, everybody's on the spot, right? So <laughs> you get into a class where, you know, you might have 50 students or less in the classroom and, uh, you know, and, and, and the, the teachers know who you are. I mean, they, they, they yeah. know who you are. They know what you're interested in studying. Many of them have sat down with you, maybe had coffee with you, coached you, mentored you. And, and so they're going to be calling on you in class, you know, and they're going to want to hear your perspective. You know, this is certainly not a place where you can get lost. <laughs> you know, you're, um, yeah. you're going you're gonna to have a name and an identity, and, and we're going to know, um, you know, who we can go to. You know, the other thing is, too, is that, you know, each one of our, our applicants really brings something special to the table. We all have various traits, various skills. Um, there's something really unique about who we are and what we bring to the table. And, you know, when we're looking at students for admission into our program, we're, we're looking at those aspects as well, is, is what, what, what are the ways in which, what are the kind of the, the unique pieces that that student's really going to bring into the classroom? And, and um, you know, how is that going to complement our small class sizes and our intimate connection with the faculty? And what unique perspectives are these individuals going to be able to share with people from different backgrounds, from different companies, from different cultures, um, you know, are, are they uh, going to be able to provide a perspective that is unique um, and that's really going to create that impact that we're looking for? And can you walk us through the life of an application in your office? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a variety of different steps that someone will will take when they're applying to our program. So of course, there's the online application, which everybody's pretty familiar with. Um, <laughs> so you know, um, once you submit the online application, which you know will include usually your essays and resume and things of those nature, um, then it's then it's a little bit different. You know, for some schools, um, once you've submitted that that online application, that's kind of everything all encompassed. Um, but for us, when you submit the online application, um, you don't necessarily have to have all of your supplemental documents in when you hit submit. So for us, it's really about, um, you know, we'll we'll work with you. We'll we'll develop that relationship with you. We'll connect you with an admissions counselor. And that person's really going to walk you through the process. They're going to help you craft your essays. They're going to help you, um, you know, understand what we're looking for in the resume. And Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. So (laughs) sorry, that's, I have to bring you back. So someone from your office will will help you. applicants with their essays? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. I think that's the first. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Absolutely. I think I'm sure, uh, I'm sure our listeners would love to hear yeah, that. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, like I said, I mean, truly here, here at WP Carey, business is personal. I mean, we, you know, we, we get a lot of questions about, you know, what are you looking for in the essay? You know, what should I talk about? What should I, you know, what should I do? Where, you know, what are you looking for? And so we, we spend so much time sitting on the phone with applicants or, you know, maybe via Skype or things of that nature you know, kind of walking them through, you know, talk to us about what's important to you. What do you want to accomplish? Okay. You know, well, let's think about some of the things that really make sense here at WP Carey. So, you know, we, we will, we'll, we'll, um, we'll walk you through the essay process. We'll, we'll really help you understand what those, what those resumes um, should have on them and what we're looking for. Um, so that when you submit that, you know, then it's just about getting us your, your transcripts and, and of course those standardized test scores. You know, we, we do a lot of coaching when it comes to, working with students, um, you know, when, you know, that are interested in, in uh, um, you know, applying that, you know, so many of them are so freaked out about <laughs> taking the GMAT or the GRE, right? They, yep. They're like, oh my yep. gosh, you know, I, I, I remember I was talking with a student the other day that, that received an, a tremendous score, a wonderful score on the GMAT and was like, gosh, I, I could have done better. And I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, you should be so proud of what you accomplished. Like that's, that's amazing. Um, you know, and, and so part of our, our, our job is really to be the cheerleader for these individuals and to help them realize their value and, and how they can best communicate that. So 
you know, you will develop, develop a very strong relationship with our staff. And um, of course, so we, we, we work through the supplementary materials. And then once everything has been received, um, then usually how our process will go is that an initial review will happen. And um, that review, in some instances, you will be invited back for a interview. In other instances, a decision might be rendered immediately. It will really just depend on the program, on the MBA program, as well as, you know, the candidate. Um, if you are invited to interview, uh, you will we'll pick kind of a time and a date. You'll sit down uh, with us either in person or uh, via Skype um, is also another option. And, uh, and we'll, we'll interview you and kind of learn a little bit more about you. And then once all of the components are complete, so we have all of your transcripts, your letters of recommendation, your entire application, plus your interview if needed, um, then we'll make a final decision. And it really truly is a holistic review process. We really do evaluate candidates from a variety of different perspectives. We look at your work experience, we look at um, you know, the, the standardized test scores and the GPAs and the curriculum that you've done. Um, you know, but we really do also look at those essay questions to really determine that, that fit piece. Um, at this, our office is a little bit different in, in that most cases when you are given a decision about admission, you're also given notification about the scholarship that you may in fact receive. So uh, we we usually like to, to like to package those together because you know many of these students are applying for you know great programs across the United States and around the world and we want to make sure that you have all the information that you need before um, so that you can make the best decision for you. Yeah, and who conducts those interviews? Is are those done by your team? Yeah, so um, so I have a great team. I have an amazing team. So that will be either uh, our admission staff. Um, there might be some uh, program staff also involved. So, for example, maybe our our career center. Um, our career counselors might be involved as well. Um, and we also try to involve our students, our, our, what we call our ambassadors. Um, you know, these are current students that are currently in the program um, that really have a unique perspective about what it takes in order to really achieve success in the class. And, um, you know, it's so great to have them involved because each one of these individuals, both our, our career professional, our admissions professional, and our, our student ambassador, really, once again, come at this from multiple perspectives and, you know, can, can provide a, a great um, a holistic view of how this individual will really contribute to the cohort. What three things can applicants do to improve their chances? Yeah, <laughs> yeah loaded question. Put you questions. on the spot. Yeah, loaded yeah. question. So yeah. students are always so focused in on who can I talk to? Who can I engage with? How can I influence you, Ruthie Piles, the director, that I'm the right person for this program? And you know, the thing that I would I would kind of challenge students um, to think about is that you know, there's also some self reflection that you need to do um, when really uh, improving your own chances of admission. You know, kind of be your own admissions counselor and really think of things about you know what are the strengths and weaknesses that, that you bring to the table. You know, review your profile. Um, you know, review your your standardized test scores. How much work experience you're bringing to the table. You know, where are your your strong areas of strength and where are your weaknesses and 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 how can you really kind of um, package that in a way that really sells who you are to the school. Um, the other thing that I would strongly su suggest is, you know, review the profile of the program, talk to the students, engage with admission staff, talk to the faculty, talk to our alumni, and visit campus. I mean, please come visit campus um, if you can. I mean, I know it's, it's hard for those of you that are living around the world and, and are several plane rides away, but... Um, but if you can, you know, really try to engage with us in a very proactive way. I think that that's one way that you can really kind of improve your, your chances of admission. Um, the second thing I would say is really kind of personalize your essays. We've talked a lot about that today of, of really, you know, taking the time to understand um, the value that the school provides, but also the value that you as, a, as an applicant per, can provide. So, you know, take some time, like, like take that essay and Give it to one of your friends and, and maybe kind of remove the prompt, you know, remove the essay prompt. So have them review it um, without that prompt to kind of see, did you did you hit all the right points? Did you know what was the question? You know, did I did I answer the question effectively? You know, so many students are are writing essays for so many different schools and they kind of get into that that situation where they're kind of like, well, it's kind of the same question. I think I'm just going to submit the exactly. same essay, right? Yeah. And and really, it's really not in your best interest to do that. <laughs> Many of us have been doing yes. this for 15 plus years, and we, we can tell the difference. So, you know, try to, try to personalize that and be really authentic um, and ethical in your responses. And then the other thing that I would really suggest is, is please prepare for the standardized tests. Um, nobody loves standardized tests. It, you know, certainly not something that... Um, 
Oh, actually, that's not true. There are certain people that really, truly love that and, and probably <laughs> take it every single year, I'm sure, just to see if they can get a better score. <laughs> and for them, I love them. Um, but, um, you know, for those of us that, that um, you know, really kind of feel constricted and confined by standardized tests, you know, please do what you can to prepare it's just one component of the application, but it, it isn't a component that you really do need to study for and prepare for. Um, you know, the other thing that I'll certainly say is please reach out to the school and kind of get a sense of, of how they view standardized tests as, and, um, you know, and how that really plays to your advantage in the process. You know, there's going to be some schools that are going to encourage you to potentially, you know, take it again in order to strengthen your application. And then there's going to be other schools where they're going to say, you know, we only want, you know, kind of maybe the best score, just send that to us. And once it's all ready to go. So um, that's why it's really important to kind of know the school and, and know how they, um, you know, how they execute their admissions process. If I turn that question on you, then yeah. <laughs> WP Carey, you're saying, you know, make sure you score the best you can on that, mm -hmm. on that GMAT. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, for, for us as a school, you know, we're going to tell you study, 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 do whatever you can to study. So let's say that you, you study as hard as you can, you take the test and you're kind of like, well, Ruthie, I'm not too happy with my score. Okay, well, let's, you know, let's talk about options of taking it again. Or, you know, have you thought about taking maybe, um, you know, the GRE or the, G, you know, the GMAT? Um, you know, there are multiple options when it comes to standardized tests. There's not just one. So, um, you know, as an applicant, you need to identify, um, you know, which tests do you do better on? Um, you know, did you study at night and maybe take the test in the morning? Okay, well, try studying in the morning so that you're, you're kind of prepared to do that. So, for us, it's it's not necessarily prepare and, and do it the best, you know, <laughs> for us, it's really not, um, you know, take it once and that's, you know, and make it that make it your best score. We know that that, that it doesn't always work that way. And um, but we, we do want to say, you know, prepare and take the time necessary so that when you do take it, that, you know, it's not one of those things of, well, I didn't really prepare and I didn't really spend the time, you know, that it at least it's a that at least your, your money isn't wasted. <laughs> That you, did, right, you did the best right. you could in the time you had available. <laughs> yeah, and it's just it's just a bad signal as well, right? It, to to even just say, oh, I didn't really take much time to prepare for this. Sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, look, so, we're all busy, right? We're all busy. We all yeah. have life that yeah. happens, and you know, I'm certainly not going to say, oh, I don't know about that person because they didn't prepare. But you know, at the same time, I appreciate the the honesty, and and then it's about okay, well, you know, how can we correct it and make it better for next time? So. Exactly. And you shared some great uh, ad, uh, admissions tips, but in terms of the interview process, would yeah. you have any tips for, for our listeners? You know, once again, it kind of goes back to the same themes that I keep okay. promoting, which is really learn about the school uh, as much as you possibly can and identify, you know, kind of some particular things that really stand out for you as an applicant. You know, what are the things that truly interest you? Um, the other thing that I will certainly say is that inevitably we're going to ask you about you know, where, where you're really going, you know, from that career perspective, mm, what do you, yeah. what's your career path look like? And so, um, you know, we've had students that have come in and kind of said, well, I hope to find that through your MBA program. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, so I think, you know, look, we don't expect you to have all the answers figured out. We are here to help you do that. But at the same time, you know, even just having some, a, a general idea of, you know, where you want to go and what you want to do and how you really expect this MBA to assist you through the process will really help us uh, understand a little bit more about who you are. So um, I would say, you know, certainly that's that's helpful. The other tip that I will give is please dress appropriately for the interview. <laughs> you know, so many so many students will come to an interview kind of um, dressed like they're going to class. And uh, I, I think that it's important to, to set the right example um, and, uh, you know, get started on the right foot. So... In terms of financing your program, uh, could you let us know what percentage of your class gets scholarships and um, what your average scholarship amounts are? Yeah, so it really varies across all of our of all of our programs. Um, each one of our programs, so whether it be full time, evening, weekend, uh, online, or executive, does have some sort of um, scholarship available to it. Although it will vary tremendously depending on on the, um, the the program. So for our full time program, that's where a majority of our, our scholarships are really housed because these individuals are quitting their job, they are going back to school, and so there is a, a great need uh, for scholarship on that side. So you know it will range from year to year, but you know eighty to 90% of students will receive anywhere between 25% 
50%, 75%, all the way up to 100% um, of scholarship. So it will, there will be a range uh, of scholarship within that kind of 80 to 90% for a full-time program. For our other programs, once again, it will range, and those scholarship amounts will certainly vary, but um, we do try to really work with the candidates to identify students that you know, do have significant need and um, you know, really kind of need some, some additional assistance, um, even though they are working potentially and going to school. 80 to 90 percent. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's really important to us to ensure that our full time students feel well supported in the program um, and and that they they have that that flexibility to really be able to to kind of you know, focus in and really learn. So, you know, as I, as I mentioned, the, the scholarship amounts will range, um, but, you know, but it is important that, that our students do have, you know, a level of support. And so that's, you know, our dedication on, on the student's behalf to really ensure that they are successful. It's really great. And how can uh, applicants improve their chances of winning a scholarship? Most of our, our scholarships are merit-based, um, especially in the full-time program. So we are going to be looking at those, those key factors that really measure up with the profile. So we're going to be looking at the, the GPA. We're going to be looking at the years of work experience. We're going to be looking at um, you know, your standardized test score. Um, you know, uh, we're going to be looking at those things. And then we're also going to be looking at other factors as well, because it is about creating an extraordinarily diverse class. So we are going to be looking at geographic diversity, cultural diversity, gender diversity. Um, you know, we're going to be looking at all of those things when really kind of deciding um, who to give scholarship to. So for us, it's about you know, once again, um, making sure that you are communicating with your admissions counselor, that they really have a strong sense of who you are and what you have to contribute to the program. And then I think, you know, really paying attention when they're evaluating um, their application, you know, just understanding how you measure up against that profile and, um, you know, and what those opportunities may be if, if you know, if, if you've spent a lot of time, you know, kind of really preparing. I mean, there's, there's certain things about your, your application that you just can't change, right? So you, you can't change your, your GPA. <laughs> you can't go back in time, you know, but there are other aspects of your application that, that you can influence. So really just do your best to identify the strengths and weaknesses in your application and really try to find the best way to present yourself um, in a very positive way. Finally, talking about career opportunities oh, yeah. for your students. So what unique recruiting advantages does WP Carry have? We have a graduate career center that has a team of coaches and employer relations staff to really support our MBA and graduate level students. So GCC provides an in-depth career content and curriculum that's delivered in various formats. So, you know, for example, online, video, we have webinars, uh, in-class workshops, presentations, career courses for credit, um, and then of course, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, we have an on-campus recruiting process, and we have a lot of top-level companies that come to ASU and offer information sessions, lunch and learns, coffee chats. Um, they even do interviews to connect with our student populations across MBA, and of course, our specialized master's programs as well. So, you know, the GCC really does everything in their power to, to help support uh, students in their career success. Um, they also, as you were talking about earlier, you know, connecting with alumni. We also help, they also help students, you know, connect to a strong alumni network and continue to see employers interested in hiring, you know, kind of talented students. So I think that there's, there's a variety of different things that we do at that level. Could you talk about some of the exciting companies that are recruiting full-time students from WP Carey? You know, one of the things that we like to drive home as, as I've talked about throughout this entire podcast is really that when you come to us here at WP Carey and, and you have a vision of who you want to work with and where you want to be and the type of role that you want to be in, I want, to, I, want to, I want to strongly just emphasize that we will work with you in order to um, do everything in our power to kind of help you get there. So I think then that when, when, especially when you're thinking about WP Carey, while I can, I'm certainly going to mention, you know, names of companies and things like that that we work with, you know, if you don't hear the name of your company, you know, just please understand that, you know, this is, this is really about your career path and, you know, and while we could go out and create all of these, you know, great relationships with, you know, companies, and which we do, we have a tremendous relationship with companies, but so many students are like, oh, 
gosh, you don't work with this company, so I can't necessarily go to your school. And I think it's really important for, for our students to understand that, um, that this really truly is a partnership and that we do um, work with you in order to identify those opportunities um, from the moment you step on campus. So, um, but to answer your question. I, sorry, I, yeah. yeah, I just want to thank, thank you for making that point. Um, I think that, that that point needs to be made more, but yeah, please. <laughs> of course. So, you know, um, you know, some some popular companies that we work with. So Amazon comes to mind, of course, Target. Um, we uh, we have Intel here in the Valley, Honeywell. Um, you know, uh, we work with um, a variety of different so American Express, Bank of America. So everything from, you know, financial experts to marketing experts to supply chain experts. You know, many of the things that WP Carry is really known for and emphasized um, throughout our program are certainly companies that are attracted here to WP Carry. But yeah, one once again, it really truly is about about the relationship. So if somebody comes in the door and they say to me, you know, I want to work for X company, um, I know that our GCC and our career staff are going to really start laying the groundwork with that student to identify that path on how they get there. So just some things to think about. Yeah. And, and, and can applicants even do that with their admissions counselors or is that oh, not yeah. recommended? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that it's important for us to know kind of you know, we, we want to know everything about you. I mean, even, even working with us to kind of say, you know, I really want to work for, you know, X company, you know, how do, how do you facilitate that? Well, certainly we're happy to walk them through what that process looks like, but our, um, our career sending, our coaching staff is also very open to engaging with prospective students. And, you know, they attend a lot of our events. We also have a lot of webinars that they attend where they are more than happy to take questions and really help students understand how that process may look for them. Um, so, you know, specifically to them, not just in general. Um, so we really do take the time to kind of personalize that. So yeah, if a student really wants to understand, you know, how that process will work if we don't have a relationship with a company, please reach out to us. Reach out to your admission staff. We'll connect you with our career staff. We'll ensure that you get your answer um, if, if that's important to you, either, you know, through the admissions process or before applying, whenever, whenever that's, you need that's it. That's really great. I, I guess you've seen students succeed, really succeed at WP Carey, and maybe you've seen some students struggle a little bit, right, mm -hmm. with their sure. job searches after. Yeah. So what similar traits do you notice in your more successful students? And by successful, I know it's a very broad term. I mean, the ones that are able to come out of business school with jobs that they're really happy with. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I will say time and time again, Again, that it's the students that are really dedicated to taking a very proactive stance in their job search. So connections, clarity, and consistency will really help students get into the companies that they desire to work for. You know, our GCC staff encourages our students to be curious, to ask a lot of questions, you know, to get to know what are the core challenges or problems that, you know, that that particular company is really trying to overcome and then learn how, how do you position yourself as an asset to really help overcome those challenges? You know, what value do you provide? Um, you know, it's, it's really about, about knowing how you can help the, the organization or the business improve their processes, um, you know, their concepts, their products, their services. You know, the, the successful candidates, the ones that are most successful here at WB Carey are the ones that just remember that what's in it for the company and how can the student really right, demonstrate right. that they that they might be an invaluable asset to that company. So, you know, the students that are that are walking into the career center, engaging with our staff, asking those questions, being curious, you know, making those connections, taking it upon themselves to network, those are the students that are going to achieve success. Um, it's the ones that kind of sit back and wait for our career center to do something on their behalf that you know, that, that really is not going to see the level of success that they really anticipated when they came into the program. Yeah. So it's, it's taking that perspective of does this company, what do other people need? Stepping outside yourself and, and, and your own needs as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, cause I think, yeah, a lot of people like in Vietnam, for example, US MBAs are seen as this almost like a holy grail. Like if, if I just get into this great uh, US MBA program, then my, the whole rest of my career is basically, you know, I, I've got it made. Oh, yeah. And um, I, I think there's some awesome, awesome business schools in the US. Don't get me wrong, but it's just, you know, it's just the beginning. You know, it's a launch pad, but then you're going to have to prove yourself in your first job. And then you're going to have to prove yourself in your next job. 
it never really ends. And I, I think that's good because you're going to develop yourself. But I think uh, at least in Asia, there's a perception of, you know, once you get a certain degree, then the road is laid out for you, so to speak. But uh, anyways, thanks. Thanks a lot for those tips. And w what is the best way for candidates to reach out to your students? Yeah. So I think I think once again, our admission staff is is excellent at, at kind of connecting. So we have ambassadors um, that it's their kind of sole job uh, to really kind of work with the admission staff in order to make sure that, that the prospective student questions are answered, that they really truly have multiple opportunities to engage with them. So we have spe specific webinars, information sessions on campus where students are there, they're present, they're, they want to engage with you, they want to answer your questions. Uh, and so, you know, that's a really great way to, to really kind of learn more about the school and, and we highly suggest that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I think that's very clear throughout this podcast. And is there anything else about the WP Carry MBA that you just wish more candidates knew about? I, I think that, you know, one of the things that you, that you kind of talked about was, you know, gosh, I've got to get into that, you know, that that one particular, you know, rock star business school that that's, you know, this school is basically going to make me successful. And, um, you know, and I, I, I love your point about, um, you know, that that's just one little piece of the puzzle. You know, the, de the degree is only going to get you so far. And so I guess one of the things that I wish more people knew is I kind of feel like sometimes that WP Carey is a diamond in the rough. You know, one of those schools that, you know, that really truly is such an amazing and incredible place where you really truly have the opportunity to you know, influence and impact, you know, to really develop yourself personally and professionally. You have people here that are, that are going to challenge you, you know, that are, that are going to, that are really going to be your advocates that are going to give you that personal attention. And, and we have such a commitment to quality here to, you know, not only a strong academic core and foundation, but, you know, but also to our outcomes, you know, really ensuring that you're well connected, um, that you have incredible faculty and staff and students that are truly dedicated to you. So, you know, I, um, I will certainly say that I hear over and over again that, you know, from the moment, moment students meet our staff, I hear things like, wow, I never knew all that existed at WP Carey or what an incredible place. I'm so excited to learn more or I can't wait to apply. And, um, you know, I just I just wish that I could share that with with more people. And, and so thank you so much, Darren, for the opportunity to really do this and to and to share WP Carey with, you know, n you know, not only your viewers, but the world. I think that um, they'll, they'll be really excited about what they find here. Great. Well, thank you, too, for this conversation. And it was it was a lot of fun. And, and yeah, we have listeners. We have listeners from over 80 countries. So. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people from all over the world that, you know, will learn about this program. And I'll be sure to link to everything uh, you mentioned in our show notes as well. So how to connect with your admissions office. I'll, I'll have that URL up. And I think it's very obvious on your site, but I'll put it up anyway. Thank you. And uh, yeah, and uh, how to connect to your students. So thanks once again, Ruthie, for your time and insight. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Touch MBA podcast. Don't be shy. We have a mailing list. Go to touchmba.com and get yourself signed up. And we'll keep you posted with the best tips and insider interviews on how to get into your number one school. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook at Touch MBA. See you soon.